Welcome to Spreadsheet Solving. In our video today, we're going to cover a really neat function called Google Finance, a function that is unique to Google Spreadsheets. Now, Google Finance, what it does is it's a function that pulls in both real-time and historical stock quotes, mutual fund information, and other types of stock data into your Google Spreadsheet. So let's dive into an example here. I'm going to open up Google Spreadsheets, and I'm going to show you these are two sample types of data we want to pull in using the Google Finance function. And for a sample stock, let's use Google. Okay, so the way Google Finance works for real-time data is very simple. The first is we need to know what the symbol is for our Google stock. To get the symbol, you can go into google.com slash finance and in the search box here if you type in Google you can see down below on the left hand side the symbol for Google is G-O-O-G. -O -O you could also find this information say using Yahoo Finance or Morningstar. Once you have the ticker or the symbol you're golden. So let's type that in here G-O-O-G -O -O again this is not uh, sensitive to caps or lowercase so I keep it as G-O-O-G and to get what the current price is for Google I type in equals symbol name or function name of Google Finance followed by the symbol which is G-O-O-G followed by the attribute and in this case the sample attribute we're using is price now, the attribute, when I say attribute, all I mean is the type of data that we're pulling in using Google Finance. So price is the current stock quote, or price. And as it loads, you see immediately Google Finance pulled in what the stock quote is, nearly 793. Okay, another type of attribute is, say, the price-to-earnings ratio, and that is represented as P-E. So I can copy this formula over. I'm going to keep the ticker or symbol static. And I'm going to hit Control C or copy. And I'm pasting it right here. And you'll notice that the attribute reflected is PE. So Google has a PE of about 24. Now I just showed you two attributes. There are another 18 attributes that you can use through Google Finance and I will show you that complete list in a little bit. Okay, moving from stocks to mutual funds, we can also pull in data using Google Finance for a given mutual fund. So the structure is exactly the same as that for a stock. So for a sample mutual fund, let's use the Vanguard total stock market index fund and again you can pull in the symbol the same way as we did for Google I have it now as VTSMX and just the same way we did up top we can set up the formula Google Finance is the function name followed by the uh, ticker or symbol and I'm going to make that an absolute reference followed by the attribute and in this case we're interested in what the expense ratio is for this mutual fund. I click enter and as it loads we see 0.18 percent 18 basis points is the expense ratio for the Vanguard total stock market index fund. Copy control C paste it over and return for means this is the last four week return for this mutual fund the fund was up 3.9% over the last four weeks. Okay, so here you have a sample of pulling in data using Google Finance. As I mentioned to you, for stock, real-time stock information, there are uh, about 19 attributes. For mutual funds, there are about 20 attributes. So let me show you the full list here. For real-time market data using stocks, this is the complete list of attributes. And for mutual funds, it's here. You can find this information um, using Google 
spreadsheets or you can also look into tips and tricks and I'll have this saved for you so you can reference this. I also provide the definitions here of each of the attributes for real-time market data and also for the mutual fund data. So feel free to go into www.spreadsheetsolving.com and head into the tips and tricks section. Okay, so this is how we would pull in real-time data for stocks and mutual funds. Another cool thing about Google Finance is you can also pull in historical data. So I'm going to show you an application that we had seen earlier, which is our stock analysis application. Here we had used Google Finance to pull in the historical data, the historical price of a stock. So let me show you how we set up the historical to set up Google Finance to retrieve historical data. Okay, take a look at this formula up top. The first thing is you need to have the function name, which is the same, Google Finance. The next step is open paren followed by the ticker. And in this case, C6 here references G-O-O-G, which is the ticker or the symbol of Google. The next argument is the attribute. And as we had seen earlier, the attribute we want is price. Then for historical data, you need three more arguments. The third argument is the start date of the, from, of the data you want retrieved. So in this case, if we want to start our analysis on June 1st, we have that referenced here as the third argument. The fourth argument is the end date or the number of days from the start date. In this case, we provided an end date of February 16, 2013. The final argument is the interval. So if we want daily stock prices, you can type in daily. You can also use one. Google Finance will understand whether you mean daily or one or if you want a weekly interval, you can type in weekly followed or seven. So to get historical data using Google Finance, you need five arguments. Here's a recap, five arguments. The first is the symbol. The second is the attribute, exactly the same as a real-time data retrieval. Third argument, start date. Fourth argument, either the end date or the number of days from the start. And the fifth argument, would be the interval, whether it be daily or weekly. Once that is set up correctly, as you see here, you have the daily stock price from the start date to the end date that you've designated for your stock, which in this case is Google. Okay, so this is how you would set up Google Finance in order to retrieve historical data. Okay. Let me just let you know of two caveats with Google Finance. The first, all the data that will be retrieved is essentially US market data because international data is not supported. Okay, that's the first caveat. The second one is at times the stock quotes and other data can be delayed to up to 20 minutes. Okay, so with that in mind though, uh, you will notice how Google Finance function is quite powerful, quite interesting, and will enable you to pull in a ton of data Okay, have fun. We'll see you next time.